Hey everybody, Shane from BDD's Performance, and today we're gonna break stuff. We're here in the shop now at BDD's Performance in the special Skunk Works corner of the facility. I've got our uh, 45 ton press here. I'll nickname the uh, Duramax, because uh, uh, any good Duramax knows how to crush a set of tie rods. Am I right? Am I right? What we've got here is our BDD's Performance upgrade tie rods for 2001 to 2010 Chevrolet or GMC Duramax applications. And what I have here is a stock OEM style replacement. It happens to be a very common aftermarket replacement. As you can see, we're quite a bit larger in diameter in the shaft of the inner tie rod and quite a bit bigger in diameter on the, on the mounting of the outer tie rod. Uh, the inner tie rod also features a much larger ball joint. Uh, this test isn't going to necessarily show the gains you're going to get from the inner ball joint, but this will help the vehicle, uh, help the tie rod last a lot longer. The larger the jaw ball joint is, the less load or pressure there is on the bearing allowing it for a longer life expectancy. The crusher rig consists of this tube and a slider inside. And the slider is attached to the top of the tie rod. The tie rod's attached to the inner tie rod's attached to the bottom of the crusher. The crusher rig allows me to mount the tie rod in an angle and position very similar to the way it would be found in the vehicle, specifically a leveled application, and allows me to load and study how much load the tie rod takes before failure. What we're going to do, rod's going to press the slider, slider's going to load the tie rod, and we'll be able to track how much force is being input uh, before the tie rod bends or fails or shears or whatever it's going to do. So what we're going to do to start out here, just so we get a baseline, is we'll measure from the bottom of the nut to the crusher, perpendicular to the shaft. So we're approximately two, two and a sixteenth of an inch from the outside of the threads to the crusher. Uh, we'll use that as a basis for monitoring how much deflection we possibly have in the tie rod. Why don't we uh, start bending some stuff? We'll just take a pause here. As you can see, we've got roughly two and a half tons on our gauge, approximately. And uh, we can already see a little bit of deflection happening, right? We're two and an eighth. So we have started to see deflection at this point. Now, if we were to remove the load slightly, we probably would see the deflection come back. So you can see, yeah, we're about back to where we were before. So you can see at two and a half tons, we're seeing deflection already. We're seeing steering geometry change, but we haven't done permanent damage yet. So let's, let's keep going. This is what we call the elastic region of the material. So now we're hanging out at about five tons and we can see we've had, we've started to see substantial deflection. Two and three eighths, yeah, two and three eighths. So we're seeing, I mean, almost three eighths of an inch of deflection already here at this point. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking this isn't, pla this isn't elastic anymore. We may be into plastic deformation already. Let's remove the load. So now we have zero load on it again. So now we're back, you remember at two and a half tons, we saw some deflection, uh, but it came back. It was elastic. That deflection is, uh, is going to come back. The truck's going to drive straight. Now you load five tons onto there, and, uh, and now, now we're not back to our original location anymore. We're approximately two and a quarter. So we've seen plastic deformation at this point. This bar here in this region now is permanently deformed. You're four-wheeling, you're driving on the road, you hit a really big pothole. Uh, or in the case of a performance Duramax, it's increased your power output and your sled pulling or drag racing and the load from the front tires with the traction load has tried to tow in the steering and has caused this plastic deformation to happen. And this is what you see now when the truck's done driving, done racing or done in the bush, you now have tow in. We've, we've decreased the tie rod strength. It's already plastically deformed and from here, failure is imminent. So let's try, let's try to, uh, let's send it, let's send it home. So there we are, now we've actually caused some sort of failure. And we can see we did that by the fact 
that the load got up somewhere over five uh, tons and you see it spiked and fell off. That's because we went through that and the, something is actually broken. We'll have to take it apart to really get a feel for what we broke. But as you can see, we'll remove the load. I mean, there's still some elastic going on there, but we've, we've broken it. So somewhere around five, maybe six tons of force. So let's, let's, let's throw a little more at it if we can. We may not be able to throw any more at it. Yeah, it's done. So, you know, I mean, you can see the load only comes up to two tons and uh, we're deflected so far, it's done. In the truck, this is done. This is probably broken off already because, I mean, if we just kept going, it's just gonna get worse, right? So, oh, why not? Let's go a little further. So you can see now we're not making any load. This is just a limp noodle. So in the vehicle, this would be catastrophic. You would be, you know, that classic Duramax video where the truck's pigeon toed and you can't drive it anymore. All right, so now that we've bent this tie rod and plastically deformed the shaft, as you can see, if this was in the vehicle, we'd be hosed. Right? It wouldn't be drivable. It would probably break off at this point. Uh, so with that information, let's uh, throw on the BD diesel unit and see what we get. Okay, all right. Now that we've wrecked one tie rod with old red Duramax here, we're gonna try and wreck another one. This is the new BD diesel performance upgrade tie rod. You see it's got the heavier duty shaft, bigger diameter everywhere, larger ball joints, all fully greasable. So we'll give this one a shot. Remember we started to see uh, elastic deformation at two and a half tons, maybe three tons on the other one and uh, essentially full plastic deformation by five tons. So we'll, we'll see if this, uh, this one does much better. So this one's approximately two and a half inches at the bottom of the nut from the outside of the threads to the crusher. Two and a half inches approximately. Let's use that as our baseline. All right, let's load it up. All right, here we go. Loading. All right, so here's that two and a half tons that we put on the, uh, for the stock replacement one and we saw some elastic deformation. Why don't we, uh, we'll check this one out. I'll jump past here. And we are sitting at the exact same point. We have not seen any deformation, elastic or plastic at all at this point. That's good news. All right, let's keep going. All right, five tons. Five tons approximately where we started to see pr actual plastic deformation of the tie rod. Even though a small amount, it was already failing. Let's check this one out. Well, maybe a small amount of deformation. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe. Maybe a 32nd. Let's call it 32nd of an inch over. Uh, so why don't we pop this, release the load a little bit. Oh yeah, we can see that it uh, returned back. We had a little bit of deformation there. But we are... Yeah, we are entirely back to our original measurement. Just a little bit of elastic. So what we're seeing here is just a small amount of the elastic deformation, just loading at the failure load of the stock replacement. That's pretty substantial. I mean, we're talking about small amount of deformation, small amount of elastic spring back to its original shape at the point that you would have wrecked your factory tie rods. All right, let's keep going. So we're back up to five tons. Let's keep going. We're up to seven and seven, seven and uh, seven tons. Call that seven and a half tons. So now we're, now you can see we're hanging. We're hanging right around this seven and a half. Maybe, yeah, seven and a half, maybe eight tons. It's sort of hard to say in this gauge, but so we're still only, yeah, we're still only in that elastic looking region here. We haven't deformed that much, but you can see how the slider now is pushed quite deep. Our load is, is hesitating to, to climb. That's telling me that there's some sort of plastic deformation going on in the system right now. I would say we're starting to see some uh, deformation of the actual ball stud itself uh, in the head here. Uh, but I mean, we're seeing that at seven tons. Uh, and it's a substantial increase in load compared to the factory tie rod. So we'll give this a little more and we'll see what happens. So I mean, we're pushing nine tons, let's say eight and a half, nine tons. 
we're definitely seeing some sort of deformation here in the ball stud region. We haven't, still haven't seen very much deformation in the actual shaft of the tie rod, uh, and we're pushing nearly double the load. Uh, so, I mean, it's pretty safe to say this tie rod is substantially stronger than the factory replacement. So, well, let's load it up a little more, see what happens. There we go. Now we're starting to see some, uh, some deformation here at approximately 10 tons, maybe nine and a half tons. Yeah, now we're, we're seeing two and three quarter. We're starting to see some, some deformation here finally at nearly t double the load we saw any sort of de plastic deformation from the factory one. So yeah, this is good, huge news. There we go. Now we've got proper failure to occur and loads dropping off. So there you have it. We got some substantial increase in strength between the factory replacement and the BD diesel unit. So what we've done is we crushed our factory replacement and we crushed our BD unit. The loads, I think, speak for themselves. We saw approximately five tons of load on the OEM tie rod when we started to see plastic deformation in the common failure area of these tie rods. This is common. Uh, this is what you would often see in the vehicle uh, when the tie rod fails with the stock style. We didn't see that sort of deformation on the BD unit until 10 tons of force. It's double the strength. That's substantial. It took up around 9, 10 tons to get the uh, BD unit to exhibit the similar failure mode. Let's sit down and uh, do a bit of a post-mortem on these things. Here we are everybody, back from crushing hearts and tie rods, and we're gonna do a post-mortem on these bad boys. Old Crusher crusher Rig did the J-O-B, tell you what. I got a pretty good dang old idea what's going on, I'll tell you what, man, it So, first of all, let's take a look at the uh, OEM replacement unit. We can see that the, uh, the, ex the failure mode is, uh, as we see in common, uh, Duramax or uh, GM HD series trucks failure. We see it right at the uh, base of this uh, nut here. So you can see where, where we go from the uh, outer tie rod to the inner tie rod. We end up with this stress concentration here and, uh, and brrr, we get it to buckle. Uh, this is common. Uh, we saw this deflection start at two and a half tons approximately and we saw full plastic deformation by five tons. So it's safe to say, somewhere between two and a half and five tons, we are ready, we're entering the failure mode. So we can say, yeah, these guys held up to five tons before they ultimately plateaued the load. Let's just say for a guess, could be somewhere around three to four tons, we would have seen already failure of this tie rod in the actual vehicle application. This test appears to be fairly accurate. These loads that we saw could be ballpark to what we see in a real life in, a, in an extreme situation in a vehicle like with larger tires, some lift kits, some extra power. Uh, people see this failure in a vehicle. So I think it's a pretty good test, pretty good representation. Let's move on to the BD diesel unit. So if you remember in the video, at the same loads that we saw full failure on the OEM replacement, we saw, what do we see? Approximately 16th of an inch of elastic deflection somewhere in the system. We can assume it's very, very minimal. You wouldn't notice this in the truck. And uh, when we released the load, it came back, right back to its size. Loads that would fail on the truck, totally survivable with the BD unit. So, how far did it take to actually hurt this thing? Well, we didn't, see this, we didn't start seeing any sort of plastic deformation until seven, seven and a half tons, right? And even then, if you recall, we didn't see this failure mode showing up at all at seven tons. We were predicting that we were seeing some sort of deformation in the ball stud. And as we can see, that appears to be true. Now looking over at the crusher rig, <sighs> What we found after the test is that the tie rod was so stiff and rigid that at seven and a half tons, we started to deform my actual uh, steel, solid steel crusher rig here. And you can see this hole has started to become elongated and stretched open. That would have caused this ball stud to start to bend because it no longer would have had the support that it needed to, to withstand the load. So I don't know if this, is, this isn't necessarily accurate to, to how, what would have happened in the vehicle. I think the vehicle would have been able to hold on with a properly seated ball stud. We'll be able to hold on to this better. Um, so at that point, we continued to load the tie rod and to get it to exhibit the same failure mode as the, uh, as the OEM replacement, it took us over nine tons and we didn't see proper plastic failure until 10 tons. That's double the load that we applied to the OEM replacement to get the same failure mode. That's Pretty substantial, that's double the OEM strength. So put it this way, we saw failure 
somewhere before five tons on this unit. And we definitely saw serious deflection already by two and a half tons. This unit, we didn't see this failure mode until nearly 10 tons. That's substantially stronger than stock. And combined with larger ball joint, this larger tie rod assembly will give your GM HD truck a much stronger, more accurate steering assembly. And there you have it. Some back-to-back -back strength testing, courtesy old Crusher and old Red Duramax out there in the shop. To show the difference between OEM replacement and BD replacement heavy duty tie rods for your GM HD series truck. For more information on these or other products, go check out bddiesel.com. And remember, keep your tie rods straight.